Arise Ghana held a demonstration, day one of that demonstration, uh, which has been marred with a lot of violence um, from both sides. The police have confirmed their willingness and availability to provide uh, Arise Ghana with security for today's. That's day two of the demo on the route agreed between them uh, against hope. We believe in hope, okay, that they will stay true to their words in good faith and in the interest of peace. That's a tweet from Sami Jemfi is the NDC's national communications officer, uh, one of the leaders of the Arise Ghana demonstration. But the man who uh, started it all here on media general platforms later, uh, Mr. Roland Walker, went to join him on Mawena Agbeta, is in studio with me. He will tell us, first of all, how he got there, what he saw initially, and how he braced the storm to bring us that report. Welcome, my brother. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm Good to well. see you. Yeah. Good to be here. Yesterday when you got the call in the line of duty, what ran through your mind? Um, well, I anticipated that I was going to be there. I had been informed beforehand and so um, I was just ready. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, initially I mistook the day for Monday okay. and so I was all dressed up appropriately uh, for official work. Mm -hmm. But thankfully it wasn't on a Monday and so yesterday I just braced up, woke up my usual time and just prepared and, mm. and got here and ready to cover and then bring the very latest details in terms of whatever was going to happen. Little did we anticipate what was going to unfold, mm. but I mean, we were prepared. Um, it started very peacefully mm. with lots of singing. There were joyous at some right. point. There was the jama to and fro, low beds with canoes on top. It was all... You can call, you can almost call it a fun activity of right, some sort right. when they were gathered at mm. the Obras. But and that went on from 7 a.m. because I went past them as early as 7 a.m. to get to the office okay. for proper briefing right, as right. to what to do or taking mm. a life pack <clears throat> and get a general sense of understanding as to what exactly it is we're going to be doing yesterday. And so I went past them uh, coming to the office in right. the morning and they were already there in their numbers, mm -hmm. they had begun to troop in. And so between 7 a.m. to a little past 2.30, it was all just the usual singing, chanting, and, singing and trying to and build up their morale and all of that. All of that. At, at what point, so within, during this time, there were addresses. Yeah. Who addressed the crowd? There were lots of addresses. And between the addresses, I took turns to be doing reports and all of that. And right. so I couldn't we catch all of right. the addresses. Address, but, but, but the ones you saw? But the ones I saw, the general secretary uh, of the NDC, he was the last person to address. But mm. it started off with um, the national youth organizer of the NDC, Giorgio Pareado. He, uh, when they moved into the park and gardens of the mm. Kwame Nkrumah Circle, right. uh, they began to address the crowd. Uh, they had initially... Um, gone into conclave with the Deputy Inspector General of Police, okay. uh, COP Yuhonu, as mm, we were later mm. made, to, made aware of. And that was where it all began to build up. But still, the expectation mm -hmm. was that it wasn't going together. And so when they went into conclave, it was evident from what the supporters were saying was that mm. it appeared the roots were going to change. Right. And so even when leadership of Arise Ghana were meeting the police, their demonstra the demonstrators and some of them who were outside were already visibly angry as to why the mm. police wanted to change the route. And so when right. they came out from that meeting, then they went up to where the statue is, which is a much higher uh, mm. uh, pedestal as right. compared to the right. general ground. And then they began to address everybody. Giorgio Pareado started, Sami Jim Fee. Uh, he announced to the crowd that the police was insisting that they use a different route mm. and and the protests at the Independence Square. And they said they weren't going to the Independence Square today mm. or tomorrow. Because that was not what they had agreed with exactly. the police. Exactly. Okay. And what, what had they agreed with the police prior so to that? So prior to that, we know in the lead up to the protests, the general conversation was that they were going to pick it at the Jubilee House, or in right. front of the Jubilee That's House. Right. Um, the court ruling and all of that put that in jeopardy. And despite they filing appeals and uh, a stay of execution, there was still not a definite agreement as to whether or not that was going to happen. From that meeting with COP Yohunu, it appeared that that idea had been rubbish totally. They weren't going to 
the Jubilee House. Mm -hmm. So the demonstrators now wanted to use one of the routes or go and end up at one of the places they were to end mm -hmm. up today, mm -hmm. which was the finance ministry. So yesterday they were originally supposed to pick out of the Jubilee House. Today they go to the finance ministry mm -hmm. and end up in parliament. When the Jubilee House was scrapped, they say, okay, since you've agreed on us going to the finance ministry, right. let's use a ring road through Akweje and then end up at the finance ministry. And okay. that was where the disagreement was at. Mm. And I so uh, that's what built up into uh, all of that. So George Opariado, uh, Sami Jemfi, Bernard Mona, other leading members, driver unions and the likes spoke. And then uh, General Secretary Johnson Asedun Ketia, he spoke in the local dialect. He wrapped it all up and said, now mm. they are moving. And even before that, I was still doing uh, some live reporting right, so for radio. Now, in, so in between this time, where were the police after they had their conclave, uh, you know, encounter with the leadership of Arise Ghana movement? Where were the police? How were so the, the positioned? The police moved away. And then if you're very familiar with the area, there's... The overpass, which right. takes you towards the ring road. And mm. then there's the outer lane where a lot of the buses mm -hmm. and the trotters mm. use. Right. That lane, the police moved a little further. Further. So towards the, so where the old bridge is. Where the old bridge is. And uh, just before you get to the newly constructed uh, Circle Dubai, as it's mm. locally called. There's a first overpass where people coming from Newtown and the likes right. use headed right. towards Accra. Right. They moved just under that bridge and were waiting with shields and the likes seeking to prevent the demonstrators from moving to the ring road because it appeared there was a stalemate they wanted to use the ring road the police mm. said we mm. cannot allow mm. you to use that and so after Johnson and Sedu Nketiah spoke mm. and it appeared there was an order of some sort and so the demonstrators began moving mm. towards the ring road and the leadership of Arise Ghana as well, we're also joining them in moving towards mm. the... Uh, the at, at what point did the violence start? That was the, that was the starting point. So when they began moving towards the police, obviously there was a barricade. At that point, I was still inside uh, wrapping up with a report. Mm. And then immediately we started seeing tear gas being uh, thrown by the police. Mm -hmm. And so quickly, I began running towards running towards where the tear gas was mm, being thrown mm. from. And I had to leave my cameraman behind because he had to gather a lot Organize of the equipment. Organize and everything. Yes. Else. And so I started running towards where the pelting of stones and all of that was. And I had to use the other side because the police had barricaded at that point. And so if you, like, like I keep saying, if you're very familiar with the, mm. that overpass okay. that takes so, persons so, so from... So where was this? This was under the bridge. This was under the this bridge. This was after the overpass... This is the side road. Exactly. Towards the ring road. And they were directly under the bridge which takes commuters from Newtown headed towards Accra. Okay. They were directly under it. And that's where they had barricaded. And you could tell that the demonstrators were coming towards them. And then, uh, if you watch the video closely, these are footages that we've been able to see afterwards where the tear gas was thrown from uh, amongst the police. The first one didn't really go towards the demonstrators. Mm. It landed within the, the police, police officers, right. and that's where uh, it, it degenerated. But, but, so that's, but then that's dangerous if the police themselves are aiming to fire a tear gas and, and then it, it, it lands amongst them. That, that's tantamount to maybe ill training. So this was so some uh, a demonstrator picked it and threw it back. And threw it back. And then oh. that angered them, and then the stone So it was a back to send that kind of exactly. tear gas And, and so you, if you watch some of the footages we've been showing since yesterday, you see someone pick up the tear gas mm. and throw it back at the police. So police fires, the tear gas... No, no, you have to bring back that video again, please. Let, let's see that video again. Police picks up tear gas, fires... It didn't reach the destination. It landed among the police and then uh, other ones who were landed. trying to block the demonstrators. Yeah. And then somebody picked it and then fired it back at the police. Yeah, threw, picked it with his hand and then threw it back. Hmm. That, 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 was, that was a situation. And other footages which we have have shown that as well. Hmm. And then I was on top of this bridge, the bridge under which the police were preventing mm -hmm. uh, the demonstrating crowd. I was on top of that bridge because some of the demonstrators climbed mm -hmm. onto that bridge mm -hmm. and were mm -hmm. pelting 
a police but, with but stones. what necessitated the fire of the tear gas what was it insults from the people um what, what exactly why were the police firing the tear gas it is a difficulty to be able to tell exactly mm. what necessitated the first tear gas switch for stone because if this footage is anything to go by the pelting of stones and throwing of sticks and all of that was after the tear gas went through right i mentioned that i was mentioned that i wasn't initially right here. so you had, to, I had run to run there later there later and so this video provides some further understanding mm. as to what, what might what exactly have triggered mm. exactly why the demonstrators decided well, to wh retaliate. When the, when the demonstrators started throwing the stones, what was the reaction of the police beyond the tear gas uh, fiasco? Well, the form police unit truck, the water cannon truck, then came forward and was driving towards them and was sprinkling the water, mm. seeking to disperse them. Mm. That was another of the, the many actions. So, so these are your shots. Yes. from atop the bridge exactly okay, that's overlooking the obra sport lorry park and then, uh, the golf filling station on the other side yeah. and all of that but what's happening now the, the police uh there are car ties on the road the police are towards it and, and viewers would have to forgive us because mawena was running and taking the shots at the same time because his cameraman had been left behind but so, what was happening here so i mentioned the demonstrators had moved to this road now which mm. leads from newtown headed towards accra right this was well after five, getting to ten minutes before the police were able to make their way on top of that road or mm. on top of that bridge, bridge to be able to calm situation. Because they were there for well over five minutes. They were pelting the police with stones. And then the police started firing the tear gas towards us as well. And so um, I suffered a lot of inhalation. Oh, sorry. Uh, I had to stop at some point as well because I couldn't see properly. Mm -hmm. I was coughing as well. And I had to stop go back, get water from somebody, rinse my face, and then come back again. So when the police started coming up again, they realized I was in uh, a media right, jacket. Right. And so they allowed me, and the protesters had blocked the road to traffic. So when vehicles were moving towards Accra or anywhere headed towards Newtown, they had put tires there, and then they were returning the tires. If you, if you seek to insist, they could smash your windshield. And so... They had begun to block the road. They were pelting stones from on top there, which gave them some advantage because the police were beneath them. Mm. And so it, gives, it gave them a clean advantage so to they, aim So they were at throwing them. the stones at the police. Yeah. But, but then they started burning the tires. They started burning the tires. Not just... For the tire burns were on the uh, newly constructed... Where, where did road. they get the tires from? Did they bring them from home? So if you watch the footage, you see there's a, there's a, a, a volcanizer pile, yeah, there. Right and their piles of ties. Mm. And so it was really easy they to get them. They dismantled their organizer's so, shop. Yeah, so this were the, these were the first shots I got when I ran towards what was happening. Mm. And I was standing here, and then you could tell the police, the foreign police truck just sprinkling the water. Luckily, it was not hot. Mm. Luckily, it was not hot. It, it was not hot, but it's, but it it's dirty water. Really, really dirty, because... I, I, I happen to have... I would so say if it's not hot, it has to be dirty. Yeah. And so... Let, let's, let's hear, let's hear the, the ambience. Tank retreating yeah. because the people were moving towards it and flying the stones. As we, as so we say in that the initial attempt by the FPU truck, the water cannon truck, to sprinkle water didn't deter them. It wasn't hot. It was just dirty water. Mm. And so that angered them the more. They picked up a lot more stones. There were lots of police vehicles. There was a police bus mm. which glasses and all of that had what been damage. destroyed. Um, other trucks had been, uh, their windshield as well had been smashed and the likes. And so this didn't deter them at all. 
they just picked up more stones because the water wasn't hot. It was just dirty water. And so they just continued to pick more stones, as you can see, and mm. they continued to pelt the, the were, trapped were there stones. school children who were trapped into the people who were not part of the demonstration were trapped in the middle of all the was, was Lots of people on. were trapped because that of Brassport Station houses uh, a trotro station where mm. as Typical as structural stations are, people sell all manner of things, mm -hmm. food and the likes, and they were all caught up in that because that was just where all of the action was happening at. Mm -hmm. And the police was sprinkling, was firing tear gas directly because the demonstrators had taken refuge mm -hmm. amongst the structural drivers and the buses that, okay. which was there. And the police had no option than to continue to seek to disperse them where, where, where vehicles destroyed the, the lorry park did we have vehicles destroyed did you see anything like i that? didn't see um personally vehicles destroyed but i saw tear gas fired towards someone had parked there hyundai elantra right, there right. red hyundai elantra right. and tear gas was being fired towards it and so in during the during the reportage i mentioned that Private vehicles were there, but that didn't deter the police, and they continued to fire tear gas towards mm. towards that as well. And so that was the initial confusion. But, what, but at this point, where were the leaders of the dem demonstration? They had gone back. They had gone back where? They had, they had gone back. Obviously, they were not there. Uh, they, they were had... not frontal in terms mm. of all of this, mm. all of this mm. stone pelting. Mm sticks throwing police retaliating mm. with tear gas they were not there and, and then came the arrests um so 29 people so far the police say have been arrested but people were arrested for what exactly i saw a number of the individuals arrested in fact we were live when the first person was picked up um from amongst the uh the abras sport area the the trotro station the mm. police went one of them was protesting that he wasn't a part of the demonstrator. He wasn't clad in red. Mm. That, I have to be honest, he wasn't right. clad in red. Right. And it was difficult to tell who was a protester and who wasn't. Because when they moved into the Trotro station, and obviously there are people there who are boarding buses as well, and right. people who became bystanders and were watching. Mm. And so the police moved in. They have their own intelligence. I'm just reporting what I right. saw what because saw. he yeah. was protesting and insisting that he wasn't a part of them but they pulled him away nonetheless and then they began to chase after the protest and so this initial standoff it ensued for well over 30 minutes where tear gas is fired then it appears the police comes down then the demonstrators come back again they begin pelting the stones mm. it happened for over 30 minutes and then the police i don't know who that, gave that's the somebody order. who got hurt yeah. Um, do you know how this person got hurt? No, we, we got there and he was already bleeding from his mm -hmm. head. Mm -hmm. Already bleeding. But, but the police and went to his aid. Yes. Um, supported him. Supported him, tried to wash some of the, as you can see, wash some of the blood uh, from his head. Were there ambulances at the, um, the, the venue of the demonstration? When you get to the Kwame Nkrumah and the interchange that's been constructed, mm -hmm. there's been room made for um fire service the ambulance and the likes there as well there's been room made for all of that mm, i see uh, and uh again the allegations have been made that there are individuals who were planted in there to foment trouble they were the ones who started pelting stones um did you for a second get a sense that that was the case i saw plain clothed police officers mm. I saw plain clothed police officers and so if they were visible enough. Yes, for you to I, identify I, them. I identified a plain clothed police officer. Mm. I didn't know him from anywhere, but I identified him. How did you do that? Because he had a tag around his waist okay. area which wasn't visible to all, but I saw it. Okay. And I saw that he was a part and initially he was just close to the police officers before um, he moved in because mm. intelligence gathering, they have uh, their own ways of going about things. So there were plain clothed police officers 
I didn't get to see officers or I couldn't identify officers. That's, that's what I'm supposed to say. I couldn't identify officers who were, who were in Arise Ghana mm. t-shirt mm. like the mm. organizers have alleged. But I saw plain but clothes What was this police officers. plain clothes police officer that you it saw? It was in a short sleeve. What color was it? Short sleeve looking whitish sort of. He was in a short okay. sleeve mm. and had stripes and the likes. Mm. Short sleeve with khaki and then... Just a normal human, normal right, right. individual that you was spoke. Blending yeah, in. it was had blended in mm. with the demonstrators because I was moving to and fro from where the fire station at the interchange right. is to the demonstration. And this was before all of the chaos started. And so there were plain clothed police officers mm. there. Because I saw some you of them. You saw some yeah. of them, giving the tag that you saw yeah. on them as well. But, but, but then, I, again, I saw one disturbing uh, image. A man handcuffed, um, surrounded by about six or eight police officers who was slapped uh, in, in the face by a senior police officer. Yeah. I got a bit worried about the kind of signal that would send to the other junior officers and whether or not they would take a cue from it. Um, the reaction of... Some of the leaders of the demonstration, Sadiq and yeah. um, uh, Adam Agbana, wrong. questioning him, for example. Um, but did that trigger anything around that place? Well, at this point, a lot of the action already was happening. Mm. But leaders had come. So we need to understand that the back and forth went on for a long time. After the footage we saw where they were, the water cannon was spraying the dirty water, there was calm for 10 plus minutes, which resulted in some of the leaders where Sadiq, Edem mm, Agbana mm, and the likes mm. came and they were questioning the conduct of the police as to why they were firing tear gas. And so mm. some of the footage shows where Prince Derek J was questioning that they had an agreement with the police. He was very angry, stating that they had an agreement with the police. Why was the police firing tear gas? Why was the police using rubber bullets and the like? There was that general sense of calm initially for over 10 minutes. And they said they were going back to speak to the supporters. And so after Sadiq Did and they the do lines, that? Did they speak to the supporters? They went back to, to speak to the supporters. In the same way I, they had done at the beginning of the demonstration? I didn't follow them because I was still with the police because some of the demonstrators had begun to bring the tires even after Sadiq, Edem Agbana, mm -hmm. Prince Derek Ejie and the likes and the likes had left the protesters were still and they began to bring the tires onto the street and began to set them ablaze mm -hmm. and so they left headed towards the larger crowd which was way towards the roundabout area the first roundabout just before you head towards mm. the vip station area i saw a man whose eye one of his eyes hit by right a rubber eye, bullet popped out hit, hit by a rubber bullet yeah he had been he had been hit by a rubber bullet because they were firing a rubber bullet so he was hit by the rubber bullet but unfortunately hit his eye and it was uh, wasn't a pleasant thing to see at all <sighs> i see so today is day two of, of this demonstration. Yeah. Um, th so eventually, did they get to their destination, which was the Jubilee House? Of course, that had been taken out. Uh, did they go to the finance ministry? They, they couldn't go to the finance ministry. The police um, dispersed the crowd, essentially. And so from under that footbridge where we stood for over 30 minutes plus, there was an order where they began marching towards them now and they were firing the tear gas and dispersing the crowd. They did that from that point, which is almost a starting point from the ring road to the VIP station. And that was where they ended. They believed they had dispersed the crowd and so they couldn't come back together mm. again. And then they the police on their it, own began It, it appears return. then that the demonstration, which was supposed to have started at 8, ended at 4, did not end at 4 p.m. It, it didn't end at 4 it, it, because it, they were still there. At what way time? After. We Would you four. give and take estimate that end? Yeah, so six o'clock. It was six, six o'clock and there were people still on at the Obra spot at Circle. People were still on the street. Even after the police had dispersed and had taken control of the situation, there were arise gun protesters still there. This time not coming together, but dispersed and scattered across. You mm. could see them in the t shirts, red armbands and the like, some tied to their heads. Mm. They were still there, still very much present. Even as we what, rounded what up. What was their mood? 
accusing the IGP, accusing the presidency of being behind all of the things that mm. we were seeing. Mm. That, was, that, was the, that was the general sentiment. They were hooting at the police at some point because they mm. managed to run into the other stations. There's a VVIP station right. before there's a VIP station. Yeah, some, there's a 2, 2 p.m. Yeah. express. And so they were hooting at the police even when the police was retreating after they believed they had dispersed the crowd. They were hooting at them and the lights. And so it didn't feel like they had left. They were still there this time only... The, the changing factor is that the police had taken control of the situation mm. and calm had prevailed. There wasn't the firing of the The traffic night. situation, let's talk about that. Um, what was it? Okay, so they were dancing to reggae music. Yeah, and so at this point it was I all, wonder why people always dance to reggae music at the most It feels more like uh, in tune with what... You know reggae is a lot conscious. Uh, they, they speak a lot truth mm. to power mm. and the likes mm. and so... You, we tend to, I've been to a number of demonstrations and you tend to find lots of reggae music played. Mm. Lots and lots of reggae music played. Mm. And so this was, nobody knew any, anything was going to happen at this point. Mm. This all, was the beginning. This was the beginning. They were all jubilant. And, and I must say that the police appeared to be very well aware of intent by the protesters to want to come through the ring road. Because mm. when I was going back from the office, there were policemen dotted all across the ring road, headed towards the Obraspo. Policemen they were all ready. on that stretch. Mm. And so I wasn't surprised when I climbed onto it and I saw lots of police officers there. It didn't surprise me because I had seen them, some in mm. Cannes. They weren't mm. on the street at the time. They were stationed at different Would you say places. the numbers of police you saw were equal on perhaps more than the numbers of protesters who were available. The police were there in their numbers, um, close to a thousand, and I wouldn't be overestimating. The demonstrators, well over a thousand. I wouldn't say 5,000, but well over a thousand demonstrators. And the police were close to a thousand. And when the force was used to disperse the crowd, obviously a lot of the women uh, who were there and some of the much younger people um, also left the, the scene and so at that point there were a lot more officers who could coil whatever situation it was there at, at that point but one thing that i realized and which was a matter of concern for me is i know there's been a lot of talk about tension mm -hmm. in the country a lot of people angry and the likes That's i right. saw it firsthand yesterday how did how did you see it because when i climbed onto the railing initially and i was reporting from the top some of the individuals who began throwing stones were not originally part of the demonstrators they were not they were not these were individuals who saw the police began uh, using the water cannon mm. and they mm. were angered and also just began to pick stones and started throwing at the police some of these individuals were not police officers i had people passing by who couldn't pick stones and throw because they had to go to their business, but were livid with the fact that people had come to protest and they were being met with force. Mm. So, saw, so they had to join them. Yes. They felt obliged to join them. I, I personally, because I ran towards the action mm. and I saw people who were original, they weren't clad in red. Some of the people who were throwing stones weren't clad in red. Mm. They, mm. they had come, or some of them who live around that area, um, it's a hub for... Uh, a lot of these, what people like to call thanks and the mm, likes. Mm. And they were there and they, they on their own began to pick some of the stones and, and throw at the police. And these weren't people who I had saw who were demonstrating I, from the I, beginning. I see uh, people dressed like wool of me or traditional piece, yeah. or clad in white. Uh, you know, did you authenticate whether or not they are true wool of me or they were just masquerading as such? Well, it was difficult to tell. That, that's something I have to be honest about. But mm. it was, the invitation was open to all. Mm. And so they made it a point to invite as many people as possible and to make mm. it as mm. apolitical as possible. And so all of the, in fact, these people were given reverence at some point. They were asked, they were ushered close to where the leadership of the protesters were. When everything was calm initially, they were ushered towards that side and, um, taken away from the sun and the mm. likes. But we didn't directly ask questions or anything with regards to whether or not they were truly coming from 
the palace of the Ga Traditional Council mm. or the likes. But they were there present. There were different groups, drivers and the likes, driver unions and the likes and private individuals. I met security analyst Adib Sani mm. personally right. there where we interacted and he told me that wants this to be as apolitical as possible because the matters that mm. confront, uh, which mm. are being brought front by the supporters, are things that affect everybody. Did you see uh, Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo? I didn't. There? He had promised to be there. He had promised to be there. I didn't uh, and, and some other, I didn't, you know, senior citizens had also promised I didn't to be there. personally see any of them. Um, if someone saw them, then that would be different. Right. I personally didn't, you didn't see, see them. Uh, Mawena, Nyaho, I thank you very much indeed for your detailed report and, and keep up the good work. Yesterday, right. Mawena Egbeta was out there um, and, and he's brought us his own account of what he saw, what he felt, what he experienced. Today is day two of the demonstration. Um, that's the Arise Ghana demonstration. Sami Jemfi says the police have confirmed that they will provide security or protection for the demonstrators. We pray that um, we're hopeful that this will not turn violent as it did yesterday. Um, we condemn it in no uncertain terms, the destruction of uh, private and, and public property, and also uh, the people who are hurt, um, our, our empathies and sympathies go out to you. We pray that the perpetrators will be brought to book because a crime is a crime, it doesn't wear no color. And we pray that they will find a middle ground both as demonstrators and as um, law, uh, law uh, agents of the law, I, sh I should say, and, and so that we can have peace, one Ghana, one nation, one country, one destiny. Happy, happy birthday to Priscilla Amuchum, Ampo for CEO of the Sweet Adipa Cakes, and also a teacher at Bepong SHS in Kwau Bepong. This is from Abigail JC at the commercial department here at TV3, it's your birthday. Happy, happy birthday to you. And uh, a happy birthday also to you if it's your birthday. Ni uh, Ama Ai, my senior from school, is corroborating your, uh, your account. He says, well, exactly what you're saying is what happened because he was there at the point. He actually works close to the, the venue. So he's corroborating your account and suggesting that that's what happened. Uh, Juliet Baywa. Group Head of Sports here at Media General. It's your birthday today. Happy, happy birthday to you, uh, Juliet Bewa. Also, a happy birthday to Emmanuel K. Was Danku. It is your birthday today. And a happy birthday also to Mrs. Rosemont Na Amankwa Wellington, CEO of the Wells Pub uh, in Odoko. This is from all your children. They wish you a happy, happy, happy birthday indeed. We'll see you after the break. There's more here on TV3 New Day. If you're out there joining the demonstration, be safe. And if you're a policeman out there detailed to um, protect the demonstrators, also be professional and be safe as well. We'll see you after the break. <laughs>